These documentaries prove just how much passion can be found in the world of gaming. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we'll be looking at the best video game documentaries. It is such a departure for Kratos when the first thing you talk about is him being a dad, right? And his previous experience with being a dad was, you know, murdering his family. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Atari Game Over for those familiar with gaming history, the video game crash of 1983 is an utterly fascinating topic. That's where Atari buried E.T., the worst video game of all time. Atari Game Over chronicles the downfall of the once-beloved company and the tumultuous development behind the game that led to it. E.T. is infamous as one of the worst games ever released. And for years, an urban legend spread about a landfill in New Mexico filled with thousands of unsold copies. Some people don't believe it's there, but trust me, it's there. The film revealed the legend to be true, as the crew dug up around 1,300 Atari games out of an estimated 700,000. It's a captivating expose on one of gaming's most important moments and a light watch for anyone looking for a quick history lesson. It's an emotional, emotional event. They backed up this legend with fact, and it's incredible to be a part of it. Minecraft, the story of Mojang. Whether you play it or not, Minecraft is one of the most important video games of all time. And if you've ever been curious about its humble beginnings, then you'll want to check out the story of Mojang. But, but in the beginning, it was, I mean, it was so basic. You can, you can place blocks on, on other boxes or blocks. You know, it's always... The documentary chronicles Marcus Notch Person's rise from lone developer to industry titan all within a year. It is, it's a bit intimidating. Uh, I felt much more just confident just going day to day and just doing things as it went. There are plenty of interviews with game developers like Peter Molyneux and Tim Schafer. But more importantly, we hear from players who took Minecraft's simple premise and ran with it. It stands as a testament to the passion of creation from both a developer's standpoint as well as a player's. I would say I'm, I'm afraid of doing what id Software did, but I'm not going to say that, because that's rude against id, Sof id Software. Man vs. Snake, the long and twisted tale of Nibbler. In 1984, Tim McVeigh became the first person to score 1 billion points on an arcade game, specifically Nibbler. It was a monumental achievement that took close to two days to reach. There are millions of people that can't score 10,000. However, in the present day, Tim finds out his score may have been beaten, though not officially recorded. The main draw of Man vs. Snake is whether or not Tim can beat his challenger's score, but it's also a story all gamers can inherently relate to. Just, come on, you gotta get it now, now or never. We've all had games we felt we need to conquer, platinum trophies we needed to obtain, or 100% marks we needed to reach. It's hard not to get drawn in by Tim's determination to be the best, and the accompanying animated segments are completely charming. I couldn't have played any longer anyway. I just simply got up and walked away. That was it. GTFO. Get the F out. The video game industry has finally begun to highlight diverse voices over the past few years. But it's been a long and grueling road to recognize female developers, journalists, and players. We are starting to see young women playing games in equal numbers to men. And we're far from out of the woods. GTFO explores the widespread sexism and misogyny that women often face in the video game world. There are sobering interviews with female journalists Lee Alexander, a target of Gamergate, and Anita Sarkeesian, who was harassed relentlessly for her Tropes vs. Women in Video Games web series. The industry is actually at the beginning stages of transforming and changing into a more inclusive space. But the film shows that these are not isolated incidents, showcasing stories from developers and players in sickening detail. It's a documentary we wish didn't have to exist, but is unfortunately necessary. What in God's name is going wrong? Doom Resurrected 1993's Doom is one of the most influential first-person shooters of its time, popularizing the genre and receiving several sequels. There's an aura of mythos around id Software, the creators of a genre, the masters of Doom. Noclip's Doom Resurrected is a three-part series that explores the franchise's legacy and the development of the 2016 revival following an 11-year-long gap. With interviews from those who worked on the original, as well as the title that revitalized the franchise, it's a must-watch for any fan. It's been long assumed that once the team started work on rebooting Doom, they left all their old work on the cutting room floor. It was clearly made with immense admiration, as it looks at the franchise's satisfying combat and heavy metal-centric score. 2016's Doom is one of the best FPS games in recent memory, and Doom Resurrected is an entertaining behind-the-scenes look at how it came to be. The beginning of Doom 2016 was really informed by kind of where we were at with the development of the entire game. Raising Kratos. 
2018's God of War was rightfully praised for its satisfying combat, remarkable voice acting, and for revitalizing gaming's most enraged protagonist. I know that what we wanted to do was not going to just be make another God of War game. But it was far from an easy game to make. Raising Kratos follows director Cory Barlog as he transitioned into fatherhood alongside the Ghost of Sparta and the effect it had on his work. But it also chronicles the toll development took on the team. People will say, Kratos can't grow, he's just this like anti-hero who just kills things and bathes in their blood. And I'm like, you need to see a therapist. From suddenly gaining over 100 new team members, to struggling to find the right voice for Kratos, to having to fix thousands of bugs before release. These issues make the moments of victory all the sweeter. And Raising Kratos highlights the very people behind our favorite form of entertainment. It's smaller. So this right here represents five years worth of work going gold. The Lost Arcade. Video games are a proven source for bringing people together. And at one point, arcades were a beacon of this idea. The Lost Arcade tells the story of the famous Chinatown Fair Arcade in New York City. My quarter was lost into the deep abyss, plunked away with the hundreds of other quarters that fed the arcade. But to the film's subjects, it's much more than just an arcade. It's a place they can call home. After we follow several patrons, the film reveals how much of an impact one arcade has had on the community. A lot of the current gamers, they, they won't experience or appreciate what we had. Patrons of all walks of life found joy here, which is sure to make viewers seek out any arcade they can find. But with the film being a result of a Kickstarter campaign and the news of the arcade's closure, there's also a bittersweet feeling throughout that will make you long for a bygone era. Oh! 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 The King of Kong, A Fistful of Quarters. Everyone loves an underdog story. The King of Kong is the tale of middle school teacher Stephen Wiebe, who attempts to topple Billy Mitchell's world record score in Donkey Kong, which he's held for 20 years. When Billy Mitchell walks into an arcade, you know, everything stops. There's electricity around Billy Mitchell. Everybody wants to crowd around him. Everybody wants to see him. But the world of old school arcade players is much more cutthroat than anyone could imagine. The film focuses on a colorful cast of characters, from the joyful Twin Galaxies referee Walter Day to the scheming underlings of the conniving Mitchell. He was a guy that pushed for live scores all the time. And now here I am at Fun Spot, busting my ass. It may be a bit outdated, as all of Mitchell's records would be stripped from Twin Galaxies records for using emulation hardware, though Guinness World Records has recently reinstated them. Nonetheless, it's an enrapturing story of an ordinary man who tries to take on the king. Well, maybe they'd like it if I lose. I gotta try losing sometime. Thank you for playing. Video games can bring people together, but they can also help us cope with real life problems. Ryan and Amy Green's son was diagnosed with terminal cancer at just 12 months old. I'm sorry. It's not good news. To process, they developed That Dragon Cancer, a point-and-click adventure based on their experiences. Thank You For Playing follows the family during the two-year-long development period of the game. It's like these little glimpses into our life. Yay! <laughs> While it is a video game documentary, it's more about how art can be used as a cathartic tool to deal with grief. It's an incredibly moving look at a family's most tragic moment, and we challenge anyone to watch it with dry eyes. You can't escape forever. Indie game, the movie. This 2012 documentary follows the creators behind Braid, Super Meat Boy, and Fez, three of the most critically acclaimed indie games of their time. So the, the way that I'm approaching design in this case really is kind of experiential, right? I'm thinking about when the player comes on the screen, what's gonna be happening? But as they all launched at different times, the film explores the fame that can come from a successful indie game and the immense stress that comes from creating one. Indie Game the Movie explores the devotion to one's craft and dream. What's the worst case scenario for you? Uh, uh, none of this happens. In moments of uncertainty, we feel the subject's despair, and in moments of glory, we share in their happiness. Each compelling journey instills a desire to create and highlights the possibilities of the art form. Well, that's it, really. That's my logic for that. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.